Good afternoon. Welcome to EuroGuidance webinar. Uh, EuroGuidance is about uh, a network for guidance practitioners to support guidance mobility and internationalization in guidance. And the Estonian EuroGuidance Center is established in uh, Archimedes Foundation, which acts as a national Erasmus agency in Estonia. So if you are interested to gain new knowledge, to uh, grow your professional development, to enlarge your network in Europe, uh, and uh, when you believe that the international uh, contacts uh, support your professional development, then you are welcome to Estonia. Today, I act as a, as a moderator for the training together with my uh, dear colleagues, Maria and Elisabetta. And uh, we are organizing a Euroguidance webinar to introduce the results of a new project. Um, the aim of the Break Cross Media project is to uh, encourage openness regarding gender equality and build links with career guidance. So in order to, to, to produce change, we want to uh, show the results to our end users, which means young people, but also to guidance professionals and teachers and parents who are around the young person. It has really been a great uh, example and great privilege to work together with people from gender education, from guidance sector, from cross-media area, and as, as, early, as, as well uh, broadcasting. So it has been an ex exceptional experience. Um, may I now introduce my, my colleagues, Maria Didus. She has been a manager for the BREAK project and will introduce the main results uh, for, from the project. And uh, Miss Elisabetta Dulberg has been a trainer in, in a project. So she will come to introduce the, uh, the results through the project. Um, it's also important to add that this is an international initiative. Uh, in addition to Estonian partners, so we had partners from Iceland and Lithuania. Um, including the uh, gender equality institutions, we also had Estonian Broadcast and uh, Tallinn University uh, involved. And now I will introduce uh, shortly the agenda. I'm just about to finish the introduction. So next step, uh, Maria will take over, introduce the main tools and main themes uh, from the project and from the, uh, from the uh, results. Uh, then we will all look at the mirror and Elisabetta will share with you one exercise. So we will all test our own uh, attitudes regarding gender equality. And also since Elisabetta was a trainer for the, for the project, she will introduce how teachers and guidance practitioners were trained in Estonia. Finally, uh, I will conclude what were the main uh, lessons learned during the project. And also, we are using a chat area uh, for you to write down your questions and answers. I hope you see the link there, so please, uh, uh, please insert your questions and answers there and we will uh, try to respond as much as possible at the end of the webinar. So, Maria, floor is yours. Thank you. So, um, uh, my name is Maria Didus and uh, as Margit mentioned, I was the project manager in this project. Um, so, the duration of the project was two and a half years and uh, there were quite many outputs uh, that came out during that period and I would like to introduce you the main outputs uh, so you could understand and have a bigger picture about this project. So um, the biggest um, output in this project was, of course, the TV episodes uh, of Why Not? Uh, ten episodes all together and uh, one episode's uh, duration was uh, approximately 28 minutes. And um, these uh, episodes are uh, subtitled into five languages so you can use them uh, with uh, different um, uh, platforms and um, the languages that we uh, translated the episodes were Estonian, Russian, English, uh, Icelandic and Lithuanian. 
Uh, also the alternative endings uh, that uh, goes together with uh, the episodes are also translated into five languages so you can use them very widely uh, all, a lot, all abroad so it's a very useful material and the feedback has been uh, very nice and uh, very good it, not only in Estonia but also in Iceland where the episodes were broadcasted and also in Lithuania so um, uh, the second uh, biggest uh, output uh, were the radio shows. The radio shows were in three languages, in Estonian, Russian and also in Icelandic. And the podcasts you can find also from the uh, project website. You can find the project, the web address down below. So please write it down. Uh, then we had some activities uh, on social media platforms as Facebook, uh, uh, Instagram and YouTube and uh, the content was made by the young actresses themselves. So it's a nice thing to look through and you can find icons also from the website and from the presentation. Uh, then we had trainings and um, uh, guidelines for teachers and career counselors and for that I would like to show you the uh, printed version of the um, guidelines for teachers and career counselors as you can see this is for the career counselors and when you open the um, uh, guideline you can see the table of content uh, here are the main topics of the project and for the guidelines and you can find here the introduction to the project and the baseline, also the statistics and some uh, examples. And you can find the sample tasks that you can use as a practical tool while you are counseling uh, young people. Uh, then we had also a photo exhibition um, both on site and online and uh, today you will have an opportunity to play the online game. Uh, the online game name is Face or Fact and the whole idea is that we uh, made some pictures uh, from different people with different career background and uh, young people had to I guess uh, what is their career uh, uh, background and you today have opportunity to test yourself and how stereotypical you are so we will have the game uh, further on and then we had also notebooks uh, for young people they are also very practical you can see here are the actresses who were uh, participating in the TV episodes. When you open the notebook you can find the slogans that motivate young people uh, and here you have a game that you have to find 15 different jobs from here and the QR code will show you different uh, job uh, opportunities in Estonia. And then when you open the the last page you can see a practical exercise uh, to write down 15 jobs that you would do if you won't have any salary for it. So maybe you can find from here your future career path. So I recommend you to use it. And here are the main topics of the uh, TV episodes. And again the picture of the young actresses. Uh, then we had also county visits, uh, not only in Estonia, but also in Iceland and Lithuania. And they were very popular uh, because the followers uh, were so active and they approached the young uh, actresses and the young actresses um, had uh, opportunity to share their own uh, challenges uh, with careers and with a different um, situation in, in their everyday lives. And now, 
Uh, what about you? So today uh, we have a very short time uh, to introduce you all that. So I think that for you is the main three things that you can use after today's webinar is the three main outputs. The TV episodes, uh, I hope that you made your homework and you watched the first episode, then you can understand it. It's a very good quality comedy. Uh, the uh, why, not, uh, why Not episodes also got a nomination uh, worldwide uh, as it was screened on uh, this year's input. Uh, a national podcasters uh, uh, competition uh, where it got uh, the best storytelling uh, podcasting TV episode nomination. And also in Estonia we won the best scenario title. So it shows it's a very good quality. You should uh, watch all the 10 episodes. Uh, then, as I said, there are alternative endings uh, that, are, uh, that go together with episodes. And every episode has one or two alternative endings. And you can use them separately as a practical tool or together with the episodes or, or together with the guidelines or free together. It's your choice. So now quickly the six main themes uh, in episodes and alternative endings and guiding materials you can see here. And um, you can see that the um, main six topics uh, go together in all the outputs. So you can see that uh, these are the main problems in whole Europe. So you, you can have it as a useful tool for you. Now you can see the topics of alternative endings. Uh, and now I would like to show you one of the alternative endings. It's um, two and a half minutes long. And uh, the topic is when the mother is returning from the maternity leave. And after that, when we watch the episode, not the episode, alternative ending, we will see a sample task, how to use these two together in your counseling. So let's see the first episode. Se ei tule veel nii pea tööle tagasi. Mu koduna olukord muutus ja ma tahaksin nüüd kohe lapsepuhkuselt tagasi tulla. Ja, Jaani pärast ära muretse. Ma saan ta kuhugi hoidu ja nohes on ka ei pea muretsema. Lastega on siin nii kogu aeg üks jama. Mm. Kui vähegi võimalik, ma tahaksin ma vana töökoha peal tagasi tulla. Ma olin su parim spetsialist siin. Ja see koht on praegu ju Tõnu käes. Ma tean, jah. Tõnu oli minu assistent. Ma ise koolitusin ta välja. Ja, aga me arvestame siin praegu ikkagi Tõnuga. Et... Meil, on, meil on niigi siin pidevalt lastega naised. Kogu aeg käib mingi sahmerdamine nende aiguspäevadega. Ja... Mis koha ma siis potentsiaalselt saada võiksin? Ma ei tea. Tõnu assistendiks või? Tõnu assistendiks? Jah. Tõnu on ennast väga hästi tõestanud. Ja. Teedi, meil käib siin hetkel see juhataja konkurs. Mul on pea niigi paksest. Et... Juhataja konkurs? No jah, see on mingi sõike mõtetune. Nii kui nii valitakse mind tagasi, aga lihtsalt mul on vaja siin mingid papereid läbi lapat, iga siit asju teha. Okei. Okay. Aitäh selle info eest. Jah. Palun. Või mis sa mõtled? Ma mõtlen, et kui sa mind mu vana koha peale tagasi ei taha, siis ma kandideerin ise su vastu juhatajaks. Siis vaatan, kui mõtetu see konkurs on. Võssu. So, uh, if you made your homework and you watched the first episode, then you noticed that the first episode ended differently. The mother 
uh, stood up and just left and didn't do anything. So you know now you can understand what is the uh, mean of the alternative ending to open very sharp and shortly uh, the discussion in the, during the counseling or during your classroom opening the topic. So now about the sample task. Um, when you are opening the guiding material, uh, you can see that there are different tasks that you can use uh, with alternative endings or with episodes. And these are very different tasks. I will show you only one of them. And you can see uh, with this alternative ending, you have a task that you can have a group discussion. Uh, what would have been different if uh, father would have been returned from the par parental leave. What would have been different and why it would have been different? So then you can go further and have the discussion uh, what gender stereotypes are expressed by the director and how can these affect someone's sense of self uh, future opportunities, of course, and choices. Uh, here you can see the covers of the guiding materials as you have to find them uh, further on on the website. Please write down the website address because all the materials can be found only from there. So uh, select the proper language that you need and then find the games, uh, guiding materials, episodes, alternative endings, cahoots and so on. Everything is there. And uh, shortly I will show you the guiding material content. Um, this is a quick overview. Um, when you opening the guiding materials themselves, you, you can find always all the content and um, baseline and introduction and um, statistics from here directly as well. And now we have opportunity, uh, as I told you before, that we can have an online practical game. The same game that I was telling you, face or fact. And we can uh, start with a game. You have in your chat window this link that you can open. And we will try how stereotypical we are ourselves. So here we have um, three uh, levels. And uh, to pa pass the first level, to go to the next level, you have to uh, answer all the questions correctly. But you can um, select the right answer as many as you want. So let's try to play the game. Here you can see there are different faces, and uh, with the um, different faces there are uh, also opportunities about what occupation uh, is possible for this person. So uh, as you see, when I first choose the fashion designer, uh, the game shows to me that this is wrong answer. So um, the game is uh, done this way, that you need to find the right answer, and then you can do next steps. So let's try the train driver. Yes, this is correct. Okay, so uh, this is the principle of the game and we will give you a couple of minutes just to um, go on with this game and try yourselves out. And please be aware um, of uh, what is happening in you uh, while you are choosing all these occupations. 
uh, we, we are asking you to be more spontaneous, not so logical, and just to uh, choose the occupation you feel like is might be possible for this person. So give some space for your um, stereotypes, please. Mm -hmm. So uh, here online we have finished with uh, uh, level one and we can move on to the level two, but uh, the principle will stay the same all the time. Um, uh, thank you Maria for the good introduction for this uh, game and uh, my name is uh, Elisaveta Dulberg and I'm trainer and the career counselor of this uh, break project. So. Um, I hope you had a little chance to look into the mirror and to understand that you have some kind of stereotypes also. They cannot be only gender stereotypes, but also maybe age or nationality, whatever um, stereotypes you can have. Uh, when we started our seminars with um, school stuff, uh, we uh, started exa exactly uh, with the same principle. We wanted to uh, we wanted that participants will uh, look into the mirror, so we gave them uh, one questionnaire and I will explain you later on how it worked. Um, so uh, here uh, is uh, the little scheme about um, what kind of people we had on our seminars. Uh, the main um, topic was, uh, or main um, auditorium was for teachers but we have uh, also psychologists, uh, youth workers, uh, career specialists and uh, activity leaders also th there. So uh, participants were actually in one sense very different, but in the other sense they were very similar in, in that way that they, all of them worked with young people and students in the school. So um, our aim was to um, decrease gender stereotyping in career and study choices among young people. And uh, with uh, these seminars, we wanted to do three things. First of all, uh, we wanted to increase our participants' awareness about uh, gender stereotyping. The second purpose was to inspire them to create some space uh, for students and to help students to become aware also about this gender stereotyping. And the third uh, aim was to uh, introduce break project and break project materials to our uh, students and the teachers and the school staff. So um, let's see um, how it worked. Uh, first of all, um, there were uh, six seminars in Estonia, all over of Estonia, in three towns. Um, two groups were in Russian and uh, four groups were in Estonian. Um, we had over 100 participants and groups were approximately 20 to 30 people. Seminars were also in uh, Latvian and uh, in uh, Lithuania, I'm sorry, and in uh, Iceland. 
Um, when we have planned these uh, seminars, we wanted to uh, influence the participants so much that they will uh, um, go with this knowledge and really share this with their students. So we started exactly with the same as we started today with you. Uh, it was the very personal level of uh, participants. So here on the scheme uh, you can see that um, first level uh, was about very personal uh, level of each participant. And uh, there we had some personal stories and personal experience about uh, gender stereotyping. Uh, next of all, we wanted to uh, touch the organizational level also, because when you work in the school, the school itself has its own stereotypic culture or the uh, way they do things there. And schools are, in this case, very different. And uh, the third level was about uh, gender stereotypes in uh, communicating with the student. Uh, we meant the communication between the teacher and the student. So let's uh, look uh, inside of which uh, topic and how and what was done. So first of all, uh, we wanted to touch uh, specialist, specialists uh, on their personal level. And that means we asked them to think about their personal stories and personal experience uh, in gender stereotyping in gender stereotypes. So we heard a lot of stories from families and uh, teachers get aware about how their own families, their fathers and mothers, um, taught them about uh, gender stereotypes. For example, one teacher uh, told us that uh, when she was young and said that she wanted to be an engineer. Uh, she got a very, let's say, not really negative, but very strange feedback from her father. And uh, she was told that this is not exactly for the girl, so maybe she should think about some other occupation. So she became a teacher. She is now quite happy with that, but she rem uh, remembers this case very uh, uh, clearly. Um, Second, uh, we had this questionnaire uh, and uh, we asked participants to uh, choose. Uh, for example, there was the list of uh, professions, very different ones, and we uh, asked uh, participants to uh, choose. Is this profession more for women or for men? And uh, as uh, we did it with you, we asked them to be as spontaneous and uh, as possible, as intuitive as possible. So we tried to uh, put the stereotypes to work. And after that, we had a very uh, interesting discussions about how they actually did choose these professions and what stereotypes were working there. Um, so this uh, uh, very first beginning, this introduction, very personal introduction, uh, made uh, participants to be really curious about themselves and the world around. And um, uh, my personal uh, impression of that part is that um, I saw that these uh, people started to really think that they are also the gender stereotype um, uh, influence for the students. So, uh, after the very personal level, we moved on to organizational level. Uh, this was not so uh, deep, because usually one teacher doesn't have so much influence on the organizational level. But still, it was very important to get aware of how school or other organization may influence the teachers and also the students in a gender stereotype topic. So we just uh, had a discussion, questions and answers about what kind of school culture uh, they have and uh, what is welcome and what is not welcome in this or other school and um, how teachers perceive that. Um, the third level 
uh, was about the uh, teachers' communication with students. So we asked the teachers to um, remember about some uh, interesting cases in their everyday practice. Uh, for example, if some student was choosing some uh, not really common profession, uh, let's say if uh, a boy was choosing some um, uh, designer or beauty profession and if uh, the girl was choosing um, some technical uh, occupation, how did they actually react to that? What was the communication about that choice? So we asked uh, our uh, participants to recall these kind of situations and to discuss with these situations uh, in little groups of uh, what could actually have been done differently. Was this communication supportive? Uh, was this communication uh, more uh, empowering the uh, gender stereotype or decreasing that? So there we had a very um, interesting uh, and uh, meaningful uh, questions and uh, discussions because uh, this is the point when actually a teacher gets in contact with his or her own stereotypic view and uh, uh, gets to know if she is ready to um, leave it or does she or he want to stay with that further. Okay, so these were three levels of uh, the, our uh, seminars. And uh, uh, to uh, conclude, I want to show you one um, career model that was shown to our participants and uh, discussed in sense of gender stereotypes. So let's have a look. Uh, here we have uh, four parts. Uh, this model is uh, very... Um, uh, used in uh, among Estonian career consultants and as we can see here are four uh, parts of that the first is uh, self-awareness and the self-awareness part uh, includes self-analysis positive self-esteem or self-image and uh, the ability to maintain your own motivation so we had a discussion about um, how do boys and girls for example see themselves differently, if they do. And uh, we had a feedback from teachers that actually um, boys and girls usually do see themselves differently. Uh, boys used to say that they are more um, extreme, they want to, um, they maybe uh, want to fight or want to um, compete. Uh, but the girls name that they are very friendly and uh, very maybe tender or uh, wanting to communicate. So the self-image uh, between boys and girls is different. Uh, next, uh, we had the analysis of opportunities. And there, uh, there you can see the uh, information and research and uh, critical uh, thinking. And uh, once again, uh, boys and girls may um, uh, use this uh, skill differently. Um, girls may uh, go more for communication and ask uh, advice from the family, for example, and uh, boys can um, uh, seek the information uh, themselves. This is what we got from the uh, teachers and our participants. Uh, in the career model, there is the third part, and uh, this is about uh, planning and goal setting. Um, and here we can see the skills of uh, career design, defining alternative opportunities, um, short, the ability to plan shortly or uh, put the long-term goals. So um, what we also have, uh, uh, what we found out, that uh, in this part, uh, girls and boys may see their uh, goals differently. Um, the girls are more oriented to family and getting married and having children. Uh, boys are more oriented to uh, build up a successful career and to get a bigger salary. So in Estonia, um, teachers see this difference very clearly. 
And uh, now if they see it more clearly, they are more aware of that, they are able to help the students to overcome this stereotypic view. Uh, the last part of this uh, model is uh, acting. And uh, here we can see that um, uh, their ability to apply for studies or work, uh, their ability to uh, cooperation, their entrepreneurship. And also we discussed what could be the differences between uh, girls and boys here. And um, uh, uh, as they uh, said, the go uh, boys are more, um, they are more ready to the actions and uh, girls may need more advice and more support from others. So uh, when uh, teachers get, got aware about this uh, model and the differences between uh, in gender, uh, they um, reported that it was very useful for them to understand how gender stereotypes can influence each part of uh, the career design uh, process in uh, girls and boys. So. Um, the seminars were both practical and theoretical. Uh, we had also uh, theoretical input from Tallinn University uh, workers. And uh, this uh, theoretical input uh, can be found on the web uh, in these guidelines. And I really recommend you to uh, get to know it. You, when I first read it, I was surprised how many or how much new information is there for me also. Thank you from my side, and uh, let's uh, see what we do next. Yes, in, a, in our slides, so we have uh, included a couple of pictures for you. So here you see the, uh, the famous actors in Estonia, the group of uh, seven persons who were in this TV series, who had the main role. And also in this slide, would you like Maria to tell what is happening here? Yeah, this is the premiere basically when we had um, the first uh, episode uh, seen public, publicly. And here are the most famous Estonian uh, journalist who is taking an Instagram picture. And it was a very popular picture in our Instagram and social media. And here you can see, this is the, the picture uh, from uh, one of the trainings that we had uh, in different Estonian counties. And here you can see that the young people are not uh, in their cell phones, but they are like listening for the young actresses and the trainers. And uh, they were really ongoing with all this because they were asking the questions and all the discussions were so organic that we were very surprised that we managed to get a personal touch with these young people. Yeah. yeah. And finally, about the lessons learned. Um, um, as you remember, the aim, uh, with the, uh, the uh, aim of the project was to uh, to find possibilities, how to combat the uh, harmful stereotypes related to gender and occupations. And uh, Tallinn University had a method methodological strand, so their role was to propose effective intervention methods, to measure and describe the effects of cross-media intervention, and to explain the observed effects by references to the theoretical frames. The report is really thorough. If you are interested, uh, we will show you our email addresses at the very end. We are happy to share it. Uh, but here you have some uh, main conclusions, some more general conclusions. Um, what are the lessons learned? So uh, at first that we need to consider that uh, our society is heterogeneous and we need to inform people and we, we need to share where this heterogeneous, heterogeneity comes from. So based on our interests, our abilities. So this is what we are. Um, uh, secondly, that the uh, study enablers and barriers to understanding and practicing gender equality is different in specific groups. So we need to consider the different background of people. 
Again, one conclusion was that uh, social media is uh, very uh, widely used among young people, but we, we need to teach people to, to think critically when it comes to the use of social media and media in general. Uh, regarding channeling, um, it's, it's clear that young people don't use the, the traditional media so much, so it would be very, very important and pay attention to when we use the channels, uh, how, we, uh, how we reach our target group. And the uh, fifth uh, conclusion was that uh, based on these results and based on the training and the research that actually both teachers, guidance professionals and parents need support to be able to handle gender sensitive uh, career development issues. So there is a s learning space needed and, and we, we all need to do that. And finally, uh, this uh, project showed that it's actually wise and it's smart to combine entertainment from one side. Uh, it is a com comedy, all in all, but it's, it, it helps us to gain our educational outcomes. So, so linking cross-media different tools, as mentioned here, both social media, all the exhibitions, all meetings, uh, and the website, but also public broadcasting. So it's, it, it is, the impact is there. Um, and now it's time to, um, to say thank you. But also uh, let's look at your questions and answers first. So uh, one question, what was the most surprising outcome knowledge from the project? Would you like to? Share Maria. Um, um, so, what was the most surprising outcome? I think that um, the most surprising outcome was that um, young people do not want to have um, a content that is not uh, produced organically. So we try to have a plan that we will have some YouTube vlogs uh, and they will be filmed, be filmed before uh, the episodes were broadcasted. And uh, we found out during this um, project that it doesn't work. Young people need uh, organic uh, content and we mobilized ourselves and we made uh, some changes uh, quickly and then we had a very nice team in uh, our um, actresses uh, and uh, they started to make the content by themselves and we were the mentors who were teaching them how to answer uh, and how to uh, talk about the gender equality and the stereotypical attitudes and uh, how can they approach the young people like more directly and more like, um, how to say, more wisely. So I think this was maybe the most surprising outcome for us. Did you have, Elisabeth, also something surprising <laughs> during the trainings? Um, during the trainings, um, uh, I faced uh, some um, fear uh, between, uh, among us uh, teachers and uh, they were concerned if, uh, if this uh, gender stereotype education is uh, right or wrong on how should we um, give this information to young people not to harm them, uh, their uh, sexuality maybe, or their families, because families still have this stereotypical view. So in that case, uh, is uh, very useful was uh, Icelandic experience of uh, their uh, gender stereotype education, which lasts for now for 10 years. And in one school, uh, this is the most popular subject. So I really inspire you to go to our web page find the uh, video from uh, Icelandic experts and uh, listen to how do they do their education in this uh, topic. Uh, it seems to be very uh, open and uh, very uh, useful for young people. Thank you.
from my side. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Then we would like to show the last slide. Uh, and here you have our contact details. You are always welcome to, to come back to us, ask questions, and we are happy to continue sharing.